We've seen so amazing things, but now, my friends, this is something we've never seen. Brandon Cruz wants advice. Brandon Cruz wants advice. Brandon wants advice. Brandon Cruz wants advice. You just locked yourself into the playoffs. Nice. I got it. Talk with old Brandon Cruz wants advice. Completely speechless, to say the least. Man, I am honestly so baffled by that decision. Brandon Cruz wants advice. It's Brandon wants advice. Green flag in the air. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how you doing? This is it, the first actual video for the 2019 NASCAR Cup Series. And it is a big one, kind of, sort of, not really. The 2019 Advanced Auto Parts Clash. Thought I'd make this on a Wednesday, because I see everyone starting to drop their NASCAR stuff. And uh, I'm just going to get mine out there, so hopefully people can actually see it. Um, first off, qualifying, not qualifying, when they pick the, the spots... Um, from where they're going to start in this race, it's going to be on Saturday, so Sunday morning, get up, make your lineups then, worry about all that stuff then, but you know, we'll have the actual starting position Saturday night, so that's why I'm making it now. I'm not going to waste everyone's time by making it Sunday morning and where no one's going to listen to it or whatever. So let me go over the drivers that are in it. So you got Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, Austin Dillon, Kevin Harvick, Newman, Elliott, Amarola, Hamlin, Blaney, Boyer, uh, Kyle Busch, Truex Jr., Jones, Menard, uh, Logano, McMurray, Suarez, Larson, Johnson, and Alex Bowman. Those are your 20 drivers in there. And uh, I got some stats. I got some things that I've written down for these past years. So let me get my, my, good, old, my good old notepad out that I've written everything on. So first off, if people are going off of optimizers and other things like that. If you're looking at the previous races on a spreadsheet or if you're paying for a spreadsheet or something or whatever, you're going to see that Jimmy Johnson hasn't finished this race in seven years. Granted, he won it in 2005, but he hasn't finished in seven years. I fucking love Jimmy Johnson for this race, for that reason. I think anyone who's new to, to NASCAR DFS and all... Oh, okay, first off, let me bring that up right fast. So, there's going to be a lot of new members joining this time of the year for the Clash and the 500. There's going to be a, a lot of new people trying out daily fantasy sports and uh if you're not listening to me or taking any uh or taking anything that i say uh if you're not writing it down or paying attention to it like then you're you're i feel like you're going to lose money because a lot of people are going to go into these races and just pick whatever and uh just like whenever the football season comes around that's when you get all the new people throwing away twenty dollars or whatnot they don't know what they're doing it's going to be that time of year with this <coughs> so a lot of new people are going to be coming to DraftKings and FanDuel this year or at th this time of the year so uh, obviously, if you just look at the stats, Brad Keselowski's been fantastic on plate tracks. I'm sure he'll be a favorite. J Denny Hamlin is going to be a favorite because he's won quite a few class races here. Um, you know, it's going to be Logano, Keselowski, and Denny Hamlin. I think they'll be a little bit... I think they'll be the highest owned drivers. I think Hamlin might actually lose a little bit just because he didn't win last year in any of the plate tracks. And a lot of people seem to forget about Hamlin being good other than at the Clash and the duels. So I think Hamlin will be uh, lower owned of those top three. But I think those are the top three going in here. Maybe Eric Amarola will have some recency bias and people will just think like, well, he almost won Daytona 500 last year, or even though that was a year ago. Uh, people that I really like in this for for lower owned people b based on the driver al alone I'm not saying cuz I don't know where they're starting so I'm just going to say driver alone I really like Austin Dillon I like Newman I really like Ryan Blaney and Clint Boyer uh Eric Jones and where are you Daniel Suarez I think and 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 Jay McMurray so what is that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 Okay, yeah, I think that's seven. I don't know. I have so many marks now. I think that's seven. I think those are the seven guys that are going to be lowest owned right now looking at the board just because people aren't going to be like, fucking Newman, what does Ryan Newman do with these plate tracks, even though he's a 500 winner? What does he, what does he do here? Um, I I like those as lower owned guys. All the big names are going to be really owned. And, and, you know, I really like Jane McMurray's in the 40 car. He has two races, well, really three races left in his career. He got the Clash, and he got the Duel, then he got the 500. Then he's calling it a career. He's in the 40 car for Chimp Ganaski Racing, uh, a car that they haven't used in quite a lot of years. I think a lot of people will recognize it as the Coors Light car. I wish they were running the silver and, and orange numbers, but they're not. Um, I, I like Jane McMurray because of... This this motherfucker, him and Paul Menard, always seem to race well at super speedways. Granted, they don't always finish, but man, if you look at every shot, go back and look at 
previous races or whatnot, you'll always see like Paul Menard and Jay McMurray right there like in ninth and 10th, whether it's the 500, whether it's at Talladega, whether it's the duels, they're always there. They're never leading. They're never loud. And granted, McMurray will usually either win the race or crash and more likely crash. But man, I like, I like those two guys there. Um, I mean that that's that guys like wait for the starting wait for the starting positions to come out. I've already talked about in my last video that I'm going to be aiming to just pick drivers starting 20th, 19th, 18th, 17th, 16th, 15th. Obviously that won't be my exact lineup because you got to throw some guys in there to have different lineups. But go back and watch my uh, preview video of Speed Weeks. I have a video in there um, descripting that a little bit better. But that's what I'm going to be looking at. So m where my notes come into play is. <sighs> How many crash, or not how many crashes, but the the amount of wrecks and people who have wrecked in the previous, what is this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the, the last six years of this race. So 2015, lap 15, or 2013, lap 15, I mean, Stewart gets turned by Marcus Ambrose and the field behind him crashes. Uh, six cars are out from there. Um, 48 wrecks in that race as well. Don't have, I didn't write down the winner just because some of these... Winners are. I'm not really worried about the win. I'm, I'm I'm worried more about the people who are wrecking and how many are DNFing from these wrecks. So, uh, lap 24, or I mean 2014, lap 28, uh, Jim McMurray crashes on his own. He gets loose, and then lap 35, Matt Kisla Matt Kisla Matt Kislowski, Jesus Christ, Matt Kenseth and <coughs> Joey Logano spin on the front straightaway. Seven cars DNF from that. Uh, Tony Stewart was involved in that. Kurt Busch was involved in that. A lot of rather big names that happened around the front stretch right with the leaders and then um caution car caught on fire <laughs> so you can count that in there if you'd like um they had nine they had nine cars in 2014 start uh 20 laps to go lap 89 um uh, what is it not, not one car crashes so at 10 to go you have eight cars finishing the race and 11 uh denny hamill wins the race in 2015 you had a six car big one on lap 67 that's the one that a lot of people remember you had um tony stewart uh greg biffle kurt bush wrecking on the back straightaway out of two when uh tony stewart got loose uh 2016 tony stewart blew a tire what is this I got some four car big one, 48 crashes again in that race. Uh, then you have another three car crash, then you have a six car crash, and then a, a, a six car crash on the last lap where the 11 car wins. Um, 2017, 48 crashes, 41 crashes by himself, 42, 78, and 37 wrecking three and four. Um, 11 leading when the white flag came out, but he blocks Brad Kozlowski and one and two like a fucking idiot. And uh, those guys wreck. Uh, Joey Logano wins 27. So actually, or Joey Logano wins 2017. So actually, 2017, I had the optimal lineup in that race taking the white flag. I had the 11 car leading. I had Kozlowski. I had Logano. All those other guys. So all that got fucked over in that one. So I... Van, that finish pissed me off. And then uh, 2018, 42 gets loose, but he doesn't crash. Um, he gets loose out of two, and then the one car crashes. And then uh, 48 gets turned by the 42 on the last lap, and that takes out five cars. But uh, there's only 17 cars in that race. So let's see, one, two, seven. We only had like nine or ten guys finish that race. So... You know, I, I honestly expect around, let's say, I say 9 to 12 cars finishing the race. I don't think it's going to be a wreck fest like some years in the past, but I think there's going to be a little bit more action than some people are anticipating. The only reason I say that is because Ford has to figure out what type of car they have for the 500. They were dominating the super speedways with that Ford Fusion, but it's only because that Ford Fusion was designed with it for the Gen 6 when it had low downforce, you know? So they had artificially make down force for that front end. That's why they kicked ass this last year at Daytona or this last year at Talladega because that really showed like what that old body was was capable of. That's why they were able to pull away from the field because that th those those Ford Fusions were just designed so beautifully for that air. They're gonna kick ass. I don't know. Obviously, no one knows right now because they haven't taken them on the Super Speedway. I don't know if the Fords are gonna really handle that. I think this year we're gonna be at a little bit. Uh, it's going to be a more even playing field on the on the super speedways. I think they got to figure out what that Mustang has first off, and then they got to figure out what it has on the super speedways. And they have pretty much ten days of on track action or something like that to to get that figured out. Maybe not ten, maybe like seven or something. But anyway, they have from 
<coughs> when they first start practicing for the class of the 500 to figure that out. And I think that's that's going to be real tough for the Ford guys. Anyway, so 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 what I mean is a lot of people are saying or that it's going to be a snooze fest, it's going to be a single file race. The Ford guys have nothing to lose, maybe other than Roush Fenway racing with only like th three people under their employment now. But I think Stuart Haas is just going to go out, see what their cars have. If they, if they wreck, they wreck. Same with Penske. If they wreck, they wreck. I think they have more than enough money and, a, and more than enough uh, uh, manpower to make back losing a car or something. And, and normally I don't support that type of mentality, but this year I just feel it's going to be different. That's just my hunch. I mean, that's what all these DFS podcasts and picks there, they're, they're just hunches. But I think... I don't think if Ford's going to win the race, I, I think it's going to be either a Toyota or a Chevy. I think I, I'm leaning more towards Chevy kicking some ass this year, um, especially on the super speedways. But that's yet to be determined. I just I, I would hope that that would happen just so it makes everything more even on these super speedways. I, I and I like Al, I like Alex Bowman, <sighs> especially for that. If if a Chevy's going to dominate, I really feel like it's going to come out of the Hendrick. Bandwagon. I think those are the only guys other than Chip Ganassi running um, Chevys in this clash. But whatever. That's besides the point. Um, what was I? Let's see. I had stats on. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, so a couple of the podcasts I listen to. So yes, I listen to quite a few podcasts. I, I read quite a few articles. So that's why. I always say, like, this is what people aren't talking about, or this is what the public is hearing from other people. So, uh, in one pound, in one podcast, I was listening. I'm not going to say who it is, because one, I don't want to give away my my quote unquote sources, and I just like him as a person. But <coughs> sorry about that. He did a statistical rundown of the optimal lines. I think for the last 20 years, and starting positions in the class. Top five, only 12% of those cars are in the optimal lineup. Top or six to tenth place starting positions, only 11% were in the starting lineup. And 11 through 15, 20% of those cars had been in optimal lineups. And then 15 to 20th, I think that was like 23% or something along those lines. So obviously that once again shows that cars starting on the back are going to be more likely to be in the optimal lineup. And I think that the way it's going to go is it's going to be one car that starts in the top 10 will be in the optimal lineup this year. So yet again, that goes back to what I was saying about picking maybe like cars start 20th, 19th, 18th, 17th, 16th, skipping 15th and just picking like whoever starts 7th or 6th or 8th or whatever. I think that's how it's going to go. If you want to be ballsy, pick someone who's starting 3rd or 4th. But when you think about that, if you pick guys in the back, they have a possibility to get position differential points. I always forget what it's fucking called. And I always butcher it. But anyway, they can they can gain position. So that that's worth one point, and they can possibly get fast laps by just being in the back. Leaders typically never get fast laps on super speedways. But if you take front guys, the only way they're going to make points on you. is or for you, is by getting laps led. And that's only .25 DraftKings points. You know, that's a quarter of a point. And, I mean, granted, I'm generalizing it like by like half the fields. So like, guys in the front, 10th to 1st, and guys in the back, 11th to 20th. But the front guys have a much harder time in these small fields to, to make positions and make um, points. And I think, I think we're having like 43 or 44 cars trying to make the Daytona 500. So we'll have... I think it'll be like 21 or 22 cars in each duel, so it'll be a little bit bigger, but not not too much. These same rules apply to the duel as well. But <coughs> sorry about my coffee. And um, I think that's I think that's really much the I think that's pretty much the rundown of things that I wanted to, to discuss. Um, you know, guys, like it, it's hard to really tell you who I like without seeing the qualifying positions. But since we're not qualifying, we're pulling names out of a out of bottles and stuff like that. Um, I'm looking more at positions, so I'm picking guys starting in the front. I'm not going to make just a, a back back marker lineup, but uh, certainly a vast majority of my lineups are going to be having guys in the back, uh, thrown in with some guys starting maybe in the top 15, top 10, maybe even top three, depending on how many lines I throw in there. And uh, right now, guys, I'm looking at the DraftKings contest for the Clash, the the $8 entry. 
twenty thousand to win, two times minimum cash. And if you go and look at the entrance right now, there is a lot of people in there without badges by their names. That means that they are new people. Now, granted, they could be from Fanduel. Granted, they could be on a second account, which is illegal, but whatever. Um, a lot of people in this contest are new. And if you go to the five, if you go to the Daytona 500, ten dollar entry, even more people without any type of badge or anything, showing that they have any experience on DraftKings. I freaking love this. So, man, I I make a, a huge. I make probably. 60% of my NASCAR fantasy money on super speedways. So this is my favorite two weeks of the whole year. The Clash, the Duels, the Xfinity Race, and the 500. Let's kick it. Let's do a fantastic job this year. Let's have fun. If you guys want me to make a video looking back on the Clash before the Duels video, I can. Otherwise, what uh, the ne the plan is probably next week, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, have a video out talking about the cla uh, ha talking about the duels and who I like in each duel because they're probably going to do two different contests on DraftKings for duel one and then do duel two. Um, so I'll have that video based on the duels, and then probably Friday I'm going to have a video for the 500. I don't know if I can get an Xfinity one out, only because they qualify Saturday morning and the race is Saturday. Uh, afternoon, I can do one that just looks at the drivers again, um, as I did for as I'm doing for this one right here for the clash. So just let me get let me know what you guys want. Message or follow me on Twitter at Brandon Cruz DFS. Subscribe to me here on YouTube. Like my video. Type in the comments if you have any questions. I'm here for you guys. I love this type of stuff and I love being here. Wait a minute, did they have draft now on this content? Oh my God, they do. They hold on. I was just looking at it. Uh, holy shit. <laughs> that changes everything. Literally, as I was doing this, I refreshed and they changed it. So, for the for the uh, for the clash right now, they have Kis they have Harvick, Kislowski, Logano, Almarola, and Boyer as the top six, top five expensive guys. So let me just see if I can create a lineup with those guys. Okay, so so right now you're gonna have to be creative. You can't just take those top five guys. But I don't see a reason to do that. The, the the cheapest guys right there on the bottom. Ryan Newman, 5300. Austin Dillon, 5400. Jay McMurray, 5600. I swear to God, I didn't. <coughs> God damn it! I I swear to God, I didn't look at this beforehand. So, what 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 did I have? Seven guys who I expect to be low owned. Well, they may not be low owned now, but at least it shows in the in the in the DraftKings pricing that those guys are a little bit underrated, and they're like no one's gonna be given two flying shits about them. Um, you got some mid tier guys, Suarez, Bush, Blaney, uh, around the eight thousand, seven thousand range. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be cool. So you can pretty much, I think you can pretty much do any type of lineup. I just threw one together with Johnson, Trix, Bush, Blaney. Elliot and Hamlin, and I got $4,600 left. Obviously, I'm not going to enter that. I was just checking to see what the pricing is going to be. But, man, this is very soft pricing. You guys can make any type of lineup you want. So, I just I pray to God that Harvick and Kozlowski start. Uh, you know, I'd really like if they started around 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. If they could start 10th to 10th to 15th, I'd really have fun with this lineup. I'd really have fun with this. And then... uh. Like I said, with all the new guys, if there's a lot of new people in this contest, it'd be great if Keselowski, Logano, and Harvick started near the front. Because a lot of people are going to know their names, and a lot of people are just going to pick them because they're there. I think Keselowski's, Keselowski and Logano are going to be the highest owned. Um, just looking at it right now. So that's really cool that they uh, they updated that. I'm recording this <coughs> Wednesday, February 6th. Um, so... That was interesting. I just saw that it refreshed there. So thank you guys for sticking around for 18 minutes of this. I really appreciate it. You guys have a fantastic day. Like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, thank you guys for listening. Have a fantastic day, and good luck in the clash. It's the